people must understand that if someone comes to them, they're, they're, they have a lot of hopes in you. You know, mm -hmm. they're reaching out to you because they're trusting you with whatever they're going through. So if there's nothing you can do for them, like absolutely nothing you can do for them, the, the only thing that will make a whole lot of difference is if you can just listen. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the person that is going through their own unfortunate circumstances, they just want someone to listen to them. Even if you don't understand them, that is perfectly fine. Just be the listening ear, you know, just sincerely give them the time, listen to them. And if there's nothing you can do for them, just the fact that they can actually just talk to you and get that off their chest will make a huge impact in a positive way to that person who's going through something. Hello and welcome to the Happy You're Here podcast. In this show, we talk about tools, techniques, and ideas to help us live more connected and fulfilling lives. In this episode, we have Aram Gilani, who is an advocate for trauma survivors, a motivational speaker, and now with the release of her memoir, Silent No More, she is an author. Thank you for joining us. And the thing we wanted to tell people right up front is that uh, something special about your book is that you're releasing it online as an ebook and an audiobook for free so that people that are experiencing hardship can access the story uh, that is empowering and inspirational without having to worry about how they're going to afford doing that. And I think that's really amazing. And I thank you for doing something like that. And I would love to hand it over to you to kind of tell people what the book is actually about and why um, you feel that that's inspirational and empowering to people. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, so as you mentioned, my book, which is my very first published book, came out in March of 2020, uh, Silent No More. And so the book itself is about approximately 120 pages. So it's very short, very direct, not too many in-betweens that you need to worry about wasting time reading and so. Um, and the way the book is written, it's pretty much like split into three sections. So the first part of the book, which is like the first three chapters, are solely on the things that I have experienced in my life, which include abandonment, neglect, isolation, molestation, physical and non-physical abuse, um, forced marriage, bullying, homelessness, uh, PTSD, and unfortunately, a gunshot wound, uh, which shattered my jaw, teeth, and gum. But, you know, that's the first part of the book that I went into. And it was important for me to explain who I was and why what I was saying was important. So the second part of the book focuses on the changes I have made um, and hopefully changes that people in my situation, whichever situation they're in, uh, to get themselves out of that misery. So I've given uh, pretty much like step-by-step -step information on what worked for me and how I was able to overcome in my situations. And then the third part of the book, which in my part is most critical, uh, is pretty much that focuses on individuals who want to learn more about trauma and how to help those around them. So pretty much people that have never experienced trauma mm. or doesn't know anything about trauma, like what they can do or not do to support or not support someone who's going through something. You know, so pretty much again, what they should consider when interacting with someone who might be suffering. Um, and I pretty much offer advice uh, on how to approach those individuals, how to extend help to them, and how to be more continued with their support, uh, because that is truly the most critical part of any recovery. Mm -hmm. And that's how the book is split into three parts. Yeah, I think that's great. And that's, you know, that's an important aspect of it, for sure. I, myself, I'm from like an addiction background, which is all kinds of, uh, luckily for me, relatively limited trauma, but still trauma, but some of the people that I was surrounded with uh, still are very much struggling to reintegrate into society and that ongoing support um, and knowing kind of the balance of that. How do you help someone without triggering too much of their traumas and, and do it in, in a useful way is, is um, valuable information. And also, obviously, the actually understanding that you've definitely been through things that people can relate to and say, oh, yes, this is someone that understands trauma from a personal experiential level. And then being able to offer the these are some of the things that I did to help empower my own life is hopefully empowering for other people. So I think it's great that you have it laid out that way. On the note of empowering and and how you went about doing that within your own life, one of the questions we ask often in the show is, is there a tool, technique, or idea that's helped you live a more fulfilling life? And I think that's a really appropriate question to ask you because um, sometimes it can seem, well, 
of course, it's easy to do this tool technique or whatever, because your life is relatively easy. But I think someone like you might have some really good perspective on even when life is is very, very hard and challenging, there are still things that you can do to help um, frame your life, uh, possibly in a more fulfilling way. So for me, um, I had to constantly, t- and that's a great question, by the way, I'm glad you asked that, because that's very important. You know, for me, I had to tell myself, and I'm hoping that who are listening and can also tell themselves that they're not alone in any given Mm. situation. There's someone who has either been in a worse situation than you or in a better situation than you and, you know, give and take, however you want to consider that part. But, um, you know, you're not alone. So knowing that you're not alone automatically gives you that inspiration of your own that you need to keep moving towards the right direction. Uh, And the second thing that helped me, and I didn't realize it until like many, many, many years later, is not to keep it to yourself, seek out to, uh, to seek out to others, ask for support. And I will, I will tell you, like, I am not who I am today without that, uh, that particular uh, step that I had taken in my life. Because for many years, as I said before, I always thought that I was all alone in my own journey and no one could understand what I was going through. And yes, you know, your, for example, your, uh, you know, your trauma was addiction, which I have never experienced, but I'm sure like if you and I sit down and talk about our own personal traumas, we will have a lot of connections because there's a lot of things that mentally and physically that we have experienced that might not be the same exact, come from the same exact type of trauma, but it is still a trauma Mm -hmm. and the way it affects us. Uh, Having said that, I think just reaching out to people, knowing that they can, they can be your support. And there are so many wonderful people in the world that would be willing to support you in any way they can, if you reach out to them and ask for their help. So what is, mm -hmm. uh, so what does that look like whenever you're in a position where you haven't reached out for help before? Is there any kind of practical, uh, guidance you can help someone like where to even begin to look? I would say um, the closest you are to someone, you know, uh, that you can trust, that you feel like, you know, it can be a teacher, it can be a coworker, it can be your boss, it can be your mother, your father, your sibling, uh, a best friend, it can be anyone, a doctor, it can be anyone, you know, and honestly, one thing leads to another. So mm. for me, like, uh, it, it, it just pretty much started that, I started to join this, um, you know, where I worked. So we would go out in like groups and stuff. And I have met a few of my clients through my work. And one of them turned out to be a woman that was just so inspirational to me because she had experienced nothing similar to what I have, but we were just so much connected in many, many levels. And because of those particular connections, you know, we pretty much became a support for each other. So we would call each other. And then from there on out, like my self-esteem was building slowly at a time. And that helped me realize that, oh my God, like if I share my this situation with someone else, like, you know, and you make a small comment to start a conversation, you'll never know like where it will take you. So just just know that you're not alone. Know that there are people out there very, very close to you. People that you might see every single day that you don't think that can help you would probably be the best help for you. Yeah, that's amazing advice. Uh, because I think it's it's easy to get caught up. And I'm sure for years, you, you were stuck in that position of, of feeling like, uh, and it, it doesn't have to be like, to your point, it doesn't have to be someone that understands exactly what you're going through. But just someone that's a sympathetic ear that might be able, you never know what people have been through, uh, or they might know someone, right, that that can help you with a specific thing. And that is, you know, we're, we're not in life alone. And that's a powerful thing to remember. And even when it feels like everything in life has has been stacked up against you, there's still somebody out there that's that's wanting to help. I mean, a lot of people that's that's they go through life and and they're literally seeking to see where they can help, you know, Um, exactly. So on the other side of that, like if I'm someone that maybe someone comes to me and they say, hey, look, I'm dealing with this thing and, and you're the person that I can trust where where can that go um and you know how in the beginning i mentioned how like the third part of my book is the most critical where people must understand that if someone comes to them they're they're, they have a lot of hopes in you you know Mm -hmm. they're reaching out to you because they're trusting you with whatever they're going through so if there's nothing you can do for them like absolutely nothing you can do for them the the only thing that will make a whole lot of difference is if you can just listen 
Mm-hmm. Because sometimes a person that is going through their own unfortunate circumstances, they just want someone to listen to them. Even if you don't understand them, that is perfectly fine. Just be the listening ear, you know, just sincerely give them the time, listen to them. And if there's nothing you can do for them, just the fact that they can actually just talk to you and get that off their chest will make a huge impact in a positive way to that person who's going through something. Yeah, that's important because I think everyone, myself included, when someone comes to me with something, I feel a need to help them and and to give them advice or something. And sometimes that's not even what they're looking for. They just literally need to tell someone about whatever it is that they're struggling with, however big or small. And it's it's funny how you mentioned in the beginning, you, you said something about you know, someone's trauma and, and someone else's trauma less or more. And it's like trauma is so relative to mm-hmm. what we are experiencing. Um, and each person, we all have minds. We all, we all have a few things in common as humans, a lot of things in common, but yeah. a few really core mm-hmm. things is that we're all dealing with this thing in between our skull uh, and all of the things and issues that that can create um, and also beautiful, wonderful things. Uh, and we all, have some form of a body. And everybody that has a mind has experienced something that has been etched in that mind as trauma, even if it's, you know, as small as their parent not paying attention to them when they were a baby. Like, our brains really don't know how to differentiate between the the severity of what we would call the severity of things. It's just like, my needs were not met, or I did not feel safe. um, And we'll latch onto that feeling. So Mm -hmm. that's, that's a powerful point. What are some other... um, pieces maybe in in especially in that second part of the book that you think could help people that are currently um trying to deal with or work through their traumas sure so uh, just to go back just for a quick second i wanted to just clarify that you know when i said somebody's trauma is maybe larger than yours or smaller than yours. This is a perception that you have in your mind. Right, you know, yeah. Everyone thinks that, oh, what you're going through is nothing like mine or it's not as, as bad as mine. So that's, I, and I just wanted to clarify that. It's or not the that other way around. Not that, it's correct. like, oh, my trauma is not that bad. So I shouldn't talk about it because everyone else has something worse going on. Absolutely. So th- that is important to note that, you know, it, sometimes we're so quick to judge mm-hmm. and, it's just human nature, you know, but, but that I'm um, hopefully, you know, we can put that aside when assisting someone. Um, as far as answering your second question, which is a second part of the book. And uh, in that part of the book, I have pretty much, if you can, you know, say that in a way like seven, like six steps plus a bonus step. So like total of seven different, and they're not steps. Sorry, I should not say step. They're techniques, mm. like things that I have done um, nothing that you need to spend money for, nothing that you need to go out and like, you know, uh, spend like thousands of dollars trying to reset who you are and then become who you are going to be uh, based on that. No. You'd make it's a very horrible simple. guru. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. Um, it is pretty much like a very simple everyday changes that you need to make. And that is first the way you think the way you, the, your faith, how, what do you believe that you can or cannot accomplish? You know, um, how you see the world every day. Do you want to do, you, are you more focused on the negativity versus the positivity? So like, you know, and then I'm telling people like what they can do, which I have also again done. Uh, for example, I'll give you an example, which is um, sticky notes, you know, like small little notes that we can write on. I was, every time I would pass by the mirror and I have a huge mirror in my room, Um, you know, I would just like cry, you know, I was, it would remind me of my scars and I was just going through surgeries and pain. So, you know, so what I tried to do to change that mindset, I wrote a bunch of sticky notes and I wrote like inspiration note, like inspirational quotes on those. And what I did was like, you're beautiful, you're strong, you can do this, you know, anything to tell yourself, even if you're just lying to yourself, it is going to seep into you Mm -hmm. eventually. And you will start to believe uh, the things that you are just reading and then you're understanding and then all of a sudden you're becoming. So that's pretty much the steps that I have taken. So I've written a bunch of sticky notes. I stuck them all around. If I would look at myself 10 times in the mirror, I will also see the sticky note 10 times, you know, and that was like the first step to me thinking, okay, I need to make positive changes. I need to think that way. I'm here for a reason, you know, it's okay. My scars are not bigger than myself, you know, and I'm better than 
you know, better than who people wanted me to be, you know, mm -hmm. so you just got to talk to yourself, you know, self affirmation is so important, and absolutely needed. And that's the first step to recovery, in my in my opinion, which helped me. So I'm going into like very basic things like that yeah. that people can do and make make a change. Well, that's 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 something that I've done at multiple points in my life where I've kind of had mm -hmm. low points where I felt like I was just stuck in those spiraling negative thoughts, which can be very harmful. Uh, and it's it's can be challenging to do like the positive affirmations and say like I'm worthy or whatever it is. But when you see it in a note that's looking back at you, it, you kind of forget. Your mind doesn't really differentiate the fact that you wrote that note. <laughs> it just sees like mm -hmm. a message that's saying, you're worthy, you're worthy, you know, or whatever that is. Um, and, and, and so, like you said, it kind of seeps in. Even if you're kind of going, eh, that's not really, I don't feel like that's true. The first couple of times you see it, eventually you know, our minds are like sponges, they absorb all the messaging around us. So if, if you're surrounded and you grow up around people that are telling you you're worthless or whatever it is, uh, and then you can kind of counter that by being your own external uh, messaging and choosing what you fill that uh, messaging sphere with. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Exactly the same concept, pretty much like small changes you can make to better yourself one step at a time. And it, it all can be done all together. So take smaller steps and then it will eventually lead to something that is more positive for you. Are there any others that you feel are particularly useful, I think, for, for people to consider, especially maybe early on when they're trying to figure all of this stuff out? Um, sure, yeah. So, you know, beside telling yourself and just speaking to yourself and make, being more positive, um, start looking for people that are more inspirational to you. Start mm. comparing those people uh, that have gone through something in life and now they have made a three, you know, or 180 shift. So now you're, you can see them not only being inspirational to others, but you can see their journey. You can see like, okay, I can pick and choose from that. So that's another part of the book that I'm talking about, like choosing people that you can depend on and you can adapt to or adapt from uh, their past experiences. What did they do to change their themselves? What kind of steps did they take? What are they telling you uh, when you listen to their interviews or, or see them on TV, whatever, however you communicate or interact with them. And that's, of course, also secondary part of the solution is, again, looking for people that can make that change with you, even if they're not physically there for you. Um, another thing I'm talking about is saving money. Financially supporting yourself and financially stabilizing yourself is just as critical. Because if you're not able to financially, and I'm pretty much talking about like save a dollar yeah. a, a week if need to be, you know, start off something small. Honestly, I remember picking up like change from here and there, wherever I could find drawers or like floor, you know, and, you know, it was like 60, 70 bucks, like a week or two later, you know, when I was look, going through it and I was like, oh my God, like, you know, so the point I'm trying to make is that we can, you know, financially secure ourselves because in my book, when you read my story, you will see how like I was able to um, get pretty much whatever I wanted because I had the financial backing, which I have created for myself. And it has nothing, you do not have to have like a million dollars in your bank account to make it make an impact. You know, just, just financially secure yourself one step at a time. That is also critical because that helped me um, not only gain my independence, which I needed to heal, which I needed to feel like I am worthy of something, which mm. I needed to make those changes that my life has, you know, accompanied with me. Uh, uh, towards me. And those are the kind of things that I have had to do. And I couldn't have done it if I was not able to financially secure myself. Um, another thing I talked about pretty much, again, trusting people, depending on people, talking to them, you know, reaching out to them, or w how you can reach out to them, all that good stuff. That can be so and hard for people, the, the, very, the trusting people. Very, very hard, actually, especially, you know, when you feel like you're all alone. And mm -hmm. that is also and important. And people have broken too. your trust in the past. Very much so, yes. Yeah. So I'm also talking about how to rebuild your trust. Oh, so great. these are the small tips that I'm giving people what they can do, how to do it, um, yeah. how I did it, because uh, I'm pretty much just sharing what worked for me. And I'm hoping that it will also work for them. And they can, of course, manipulate it, however, to make it better for them. Yeah, you know, what's great is that in in your own book, you're you're referencing to find people that have been through things that maybe are similar or, or worse than what you've been through and however you perceive that and to look at how they talk about what they did to make that transition to living a more fulfilling life 
and you're now coming full circle and doing that yourself. Uh, Absolutely. And I think that's, you know, that's what this show is all about. This is what it started as. And this is what it just like always cycles back around to is like people that have these kind of like stories of taking control of your own life and taking control of your own mind usually is a big part of that. Um, and kind of becoming an inspiration to help others come out of that cycle of suffering as well. Correct. Yeah, it's very important. And yes, I feel like all of us, no matter, you know, what stage of life we're in, um, we, we always can learn and give, mm. you know, it, it's like, again, it's a, it's a, it's a cycle of life. It's a cycle. It's what humans are you good know, at. Whatever someone, yeah. Like whatever someone have done like hundred years ago, we're still doing the same exact things. We're probably just modernizing it as we go, but yeah. we're still repeating the same exact things. That's the reason why if you ever hear a motivational speaker talk about things and you, you compare like five of them in a way, they're t all talking about the same exact thing, but just in their own language. Yeah. And so, you know, we're not doing anything different than someone else have. We're just pretty much helping people connect to us, whoever they, you know, whoever we can connect with and versus someone else they can connect with. So it's, it's all a cycle that we're just facing. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's humans, humans, exa that's exactly how we grow and adapt is we look at other humans and then we learn something and then we tell other humans what we learned. And then it's this like ongoing cycle and we all learn from each other. And that's like, something that we've obviously um we're very good at whether that the, the tricky thing is, is we also learn negative things from other people uh we and which is why it's important to be more mindful about who you're consuming information from online what kind of messages you have around your house you're kind of mentioning these things and and that's really important is like who who am i following on the internet you know what kind of books am i reading am i reading inspirational people like you? Am I following inspirational people like you? Or am I, you know, following my uncle who's always, I don't know, talking about how the world's going to end or whatever it, <laughs> whatever it is, or people that are bullies, right? Like, are you surrounding yourself with bullies? Uh, uh, and that nothing will destroy your self-worth more than surrounding yourself with that. And nothing will build your self-worth up more than surrounding yourself by ins with inspirational people and ideas. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And because of the internet, thankfully, many of us have access to people and ideas that are outside of what physically is around us. If we're stuck in a situation where we can't get away from a certain group of people or ideas. It, exactly. Oh my God. Internet is a total lifesaver, especially for me when I really didn't have a lot of people to depend on. And, you know, and, and, um, you know, or if you do have people that you potentially can depend on, but you just feel like you can't really connect to them or, they may not understand you. So you just have to depend on yourself. And in that situation, um, internet, you know, it's completely unbiased. You're pretty much getting whatever you put in. You know, if you want someone's true opinion, then you'll read it. And it's not coming from someone who's going to be, um, you know, sugarcoating things for you in a way. Yeah. And that sometimes that helps, you know, that just, that really helps you see like, okay, you know, I, again, come back to the same thing. I'm not alone. I, you know, there are people out there just like me and here's this person who has like absolutely no idea who I am. I don't know who they are. And if they're saying that, then obviously they're just saying that based on their own opinion, which matters nothing to them about like who I am and they, they're not being biased pretty much. Yeah. They're not just trying to be nice. <laughs> Correct. Which is also important, especially when, you know, when you're recovering. Yeah. Because you think like, I don't know if I can trust someone or not. Absolutely. Yeah. That was a big thing for me whenever I was first trying to get sober and I was surrounded by all, everybody that I knew were addicts. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, all of them were like, well, why would you want to get sober? Like, you're just, you're making it a problem and it's not a problem. And like, you know, there's all these different excuses that people that are addicts make up about how that lifestyle is just how it is and, and it's okay. And it's like the only r logical way to react to the world. And so the internet enabled me to find people that were outside of that worldview and kind of validate the feelings that I had that like, there's something else to life, uh, but beyond this, which I did not see in my immediate surroundings. Um, and I'm, I'm super like supremely grateful <laughs> that the, the internet yeah. exists. That's that shows up on my daily gratitude journal, like every day, the internet. Absolutely. And you know, this is, uh, and just based on what you just said, I will tell you, that's exactly the reason why I had to dedicate a part of the book to those who have never experienced trauma or any sort of, you know, unfortunate circumstances like that. 
mentioned uh, in the in the fewer in the chapters before. And it was important for me to show them or or dedicate that part of the book to them because it was important for me to say, I know you may not have not have gone through these things, uh, but we need you. You know, we really yeah. really want you to know that how much your support means to us, what you can or cannot do, and what you should or should not do because that's also important. You know, because remember when you asked me a question about like, oh, like how do people reach out to someone or like what kind of support they can offer? Sometimes again, it, it can be simply as like sitting next to me, listening to what I have to say. And that is a support all by itself. So these are the kind of things I'm, I'm pretty much like telling people um, if they've never experienced anything, because many times as, as I'm sure you and I have probably gone through this experience where, you know, we reach out to people and they're like, just so hesitant, you know, they're mm. like, oh my God, I don't know if I can help you. I don't understand this. Yeah. So, and then they say things or they may do things that they are not intentionally meaning it in a bad way, but because we are so traumatized, everything, even if they do something nice for us, we're looking at it from a negative perspective because that's what our mind is making us believe. So in, in that sense, like I'm pretty much like breaking things down for those who could potentially provide the support and telling them what to do and what, what to um, not do, mm. uh, I guess, to make the situations worse for those who are suffering. Yeah, that's a really important piece of piece of the book. And I think that if you're listening to this and, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the experience of trauma resonates with you, then obviously there's a, a large portion of this book that's for you. And if you're listening to this and you're like, that doesn't resonate with me, uh, good for you. Uh, and, and really be grateful <laughs> that that's the case. And also the third section of your book is totally for these people. So it's really for everybody and it's available for free. Uh, there will be links in the show notes below or the uh, description if you're lis li listening on the web page. And there is an ebook version and there's also an audiobook version. I know a lot of people that listen to podcasts also listen to audiobooks. So that is uh, an appropriate way to to listen. Absolutely. You can simply contact me at contact at iramgilani.com. Uh, you can connect with me on Facebook. My Facebook page is Iram Gilani Official. And my Instagram and my Twitter is Iram Gilani 2020. So those are my pages. You can connect with me, send me a message. And if you would like a hard copy of the book, um, because I'm more of a that kind of person, like I just need to have it too, a hard yeah. copy <laughs> to get that process. I'm happy to send you what I have uh, at no cost to you. So anything I can do to help anyone who wishes to get a copy of it. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for coming yeah, on and, and sharing the things that you've learned from. I think that that's how we can make meaning out of lives that are full of so much, um, you know, you know, things that are really, really uh, difficult and traumatic. And um, being able to turn that into some sort of meaning is powerful. And then it helps other people continue that cycle of making something meaningful out of it and continuing to heal as 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 the humans because when we are healed humans or healing humans uh, we tend to do less harm to others which is important because that cycle is just constantly spinning with every interaction that we have um, so you're you're doing uh, a great uh, service by sharing your story and, and these messages with people thank you so much and thank you for coming on the show.